This video is brought to you by Pitaka. With the S24 first impressions already gathered and documented, I couldn't be more excited to try the best of what Samsung has to offer, the S24 Ultra. I picked the 512GB model in black which had a bit of a deal, coming with a Samsung wireless charger and a tad smaller 25W brick which I think fits better the regular S24 model since it maxes out at that charging speed. Nevertheless, similar to my S24 first impressions video which I'll link at the end of this one, unboxing the Ultra is very much as exciting and insufficient at the same time as there isn't really much to drool over inside the box. The excitement of course comes once you witness the vastness of this phone and how gorgeous it looks in this Batman matte finish. As I've had the pleasure to use the S23 Ultra in the past, I knew I'm stepping into familiar waters when it comes to the overall shape and design, but I'm still joyful to reintroduce myself to this now completely flat 6.8 inch behemoth of a display. This phone is like your 7 foot cousin that you only see during the holidays, always imposing. In fact, I placed it next to my OnePlus Open just to be sure my eyes are not deceiving me and yes, it is a massive phone. That same affirmation struck me once I started carrying it around for the very first time. Unlike the iPhone 15 Pro that boasts a titanium frame only to be much lighter than the predecessor, the Ultra feels as hefty in the hand as I remembered it in the last model, so I had to search what the weight difference is between the S23 and the S24. And yeah, it still weighs as much as the 13 size shoe of your cousin. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Okay, so I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I want to show you something that I'm super excited about and I just tested it myself. So, when I open a black and white photo, and I'm, I have two very classic photos with me right now, and if I do this motion to see details about the photo, an AI feature that pops up, first one is colorize. So with a press of a button, I can colorize this photo and see it in a way that I've never seen it before. Look at this. Now the same thing, colorize, look at this, <laughs> this is amazing. Now imagine this with a bunch of black and white photos from uh, your family tree. I can't wait to test this myself. For a moment, once I set it up, I kind of felt bummed out because things started to feel very much the same as I remember them with the S23 Ultra, with the exception, of course, of my balance in my bank account. Maybe I was a little bit affected by a recent article I read stating that Samsung's own chairman was disappointed by the team for the lack of innovation in the S24 lineup. But then I was finally in with my SIM activated and my backup restored and I started witnessing that ultra spice that became obvious as soon as I placed the phone next to my iPhone 15 Pro. I didn't mind the rounded screen from the past and I'm not a big fan on scratch resistance marketing lingo, but what's impressive with this flat display and the corny anti-reflective glass is that it looks like a rectangular black hole next to any other phone. It is much darker, evading reflections like a black cat at midnight, reducing the need to crank up the brightness to see what's on the screen, which is super impressive. And then comes that 2600 nitage, which I think at this point is as bright as the flashlight on the back. So. It was clear to me that this phone will look great no matter the lighting conditions. So the OnePlus Open, the foldable from OnePlus, doesn't have a wireless charger on the back, but in the box you get a 67 watt brick which charges this device crazy fast. Now with the S24 Ultra, not only you're not getting anything in the box in terms of charging, but it is still capped at 45 watts and with a 5000 mAh capacity, this thing is begging for faster charging. In fact, I would ditch the wireless charging option, you know, altogether for a faster wired charging. But still, it's a great phone. The next thing that caught my attention was of course One UI 6. All aspects of the interface look very cohesive and balanced with enough white space all around and in this large canvas everything stands out even more. I'm not sure if it's this optimized version of One UI or the 4 nanometer Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 or the combination of both but things run as smooth as a penguin sliding on ice and I'm not getting into the AI goodness packed inside yet. So there is a clear resemblance between the new One UI 6.1 and iOS. 
specifically in the control center. One thing I wish Samsung would take from the iPhone, and this is something that I use all the time, is not only the ability to control the brightness of the screen, but also the volume instead of using the buttons on the side. Because sometimes when you're in bed and you just want to adjust you know, the volume a tad without having to reposition the phone or touch it whenever it's on the charger, is by using your finger just like this. And that is missing. So before we get into all the fun stuff, one thing I was hoping to see on all of the S24 series this year was Qi 2. If you're not aware, Qi 2, also known as Qi version 2, offers not only faster charging speeds, but also magnets to help the alignment between the charging pad and the device. Or in other words, MagSafe. Since I'm also an iPhone user, I appreciate MagSafe a lot. And to be completely honest, the reason I love MagSafe is not so much the wireless charging aspect of it, but the ability to snap the phone to chargers and mounts, as well as attach accessories to it, like my wallet, for example, which I also use as a stand. Thankfully, my friends from Pitaka have thought of that and have integrated MagSafe in their latest Mac Easy 4 cases for Samsung Galaxy S24 series. All of Pitaka cases are made with aerospace-grade aramid fiber, which is known for its exceptional strength, lightness, and resistance to scratch, corrosion, and discoloration. This thing is super thin at only 1.14 millimeters and weighs less than 25 grams. Pitaka skillfully weaves colored aramid fiber into simple yet vibrant hues, resulting in unique cases like the sunset one or moonrise, and of course the classic black and gray, which is my favorite for the ultra. The raised camera lip protects the lenses when placing the phone down, but of course, my favorite aspect of this case is being able to snap it and charge it anywhere, and of course, use my magnetic wallet. To properly handle the giant S24 Ultra, you can bundle the Pitaka case with the Mac Easy Grip, which can not only give your pinky a break, but also serve as a stand. So be sure to check out Pitaka's special offer, and the first 100 of you will get 10% off with my code by following the first link in the description below. Now, I'm sure there will be those of you who will be concerned about using a magnetic case with the S Pen on the Ultra. And you'll be totally right. But this concern only applies whenever something is attached to the back of it. So for example, if I attach my wallet to the back of the phone and I take my pencil out, I will not only get a warning from the phone that it may interfere with the pencil, but also the pencil will not work properly. See? But if I detach the wallet, then everything goes back to normal. So it is a well-known fact at this point that the cameras of the Ultra are very similar to those of last year's Champ with some well thought out changes having now 3x and 5x optical options which I actually had the pleasure to test the day I set this phone up and I have to say I'm very impressed. As a 5x aficionado my good friend Dimitri will surely enjoy this camera system. What I'm particularly excited about, and this is something that was missing in last year's phone, is the ability to switch between all rear camera lenses when recording at 4K at 30 or 60 frames per second. This is actually something that I use a lot when I record my kids with the iPhone and I can stay on track as they run around having fun and it is greatly appreciated. Another camera feature that immediately caught my eye is something that is available only in pro video mode and that is 4K at 120 frames per second. As a content creator, I see this being utilized a lot around the studio and I'm sure it will come in handy when catching some fast action moments outside. I'm confident I will have a lot more to say when it comes to camera performance and I will report on my observations in my full review later and in my upcoming day in the life video. So. Stay tuned. Now let's talk AI. There are a bunch of features worth testing and I already shared my first impressions of generative AI in my S24 video, but I've only had this phone for a few days and in that time, a few left an impression worth sharing. Things I see myself using in the long run. A great example of that is manipulating a photo with AI to fix its horizon or expand its horizon. So for example, we have this photo of the cranes and if I go to edit, I can tap on the little AI icon and I can use the bar to expand the photo and it will fill the rest of the picture with information. This being a fairly simpler photo for this purpose should work just fine, but keep in mind that this is version number one. So if the actual shot is more complex, you might have some weird artifacts. But as you can see here, 
the end result is fantastic. The next thing that everyone is raving about is circle to search. By holding the home bar, you can search pretty much anything you see on the screen and that can come in handy when, let's say, you are consuming media or just roaming around the city. By the way, this works on YouTube or when browsing around, but not when streaming movies or TV shows. In that case, the recording protection kicks in and you end up searching nothing. If you are on the streets, however, you can use the camera and hold the home button only to take a temporary screenshot while circling the object of interest. And I have to say, this thing works fantastic. A feature that will become an absolute standard in any phone and brand in the very near future is the ability to erase an object from a photo. As bad as generative fill still is, erasing an object and filling in the void is quite impressive. And this is one part of the AI that I don't mind becoming a status quo. The next feature that I'm super excited about and I managed to test a little bit with the S24 is voice recording and specifically transcribing the recordings post factum with the help of Galaxy AI. In my initial test, I was doing those recordings from the car with a very questionable audio, but now that I had some time to play a little bit with it, I see this becoming a great way to dump thoughts and ideas into a voice memo, which I can later transcribe, grab, insert into my script, and include in a video like this. It is still clunky and it doesn't work great, suffering mainly from inability to distinguish separate speakers, sentences and punctuation, but I'm sure this will get better over time. It is again something that I see becoming a part of every other phone come the next, let's say, five years. It's like the first S-Class saloons in 1981 delivered with the combined driver airbag and seat belt tensioners, something that is now the bare minimum requirement of a vehicle safety. The next thing that is surely super playful is slowing down videos no matter what they are. Whether you're shooting in full HD or 4K, 30 or 60, you can hold down the finger on a video to slow it down and AI fills in the frames for you, creating a very dreamy video that is surely fun to watch. This of course doesn't work once you download the footage, but only on device and only for a moment. But this smells like live photos on the iPhone. I'm telling you, if you have kids, live photos and having the option to hear their giggle, you know, years later is absolutely priceless. Same thing like with the previous feature. Imagine this 10 years later, you know, fond memories of close people touching. There's so much AI to cover and I didn't even get to the pencil and we're running out of time, but I promise I'll get to all that in my full review soon. Meanwhile, check out my first impression video with the S24 here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter and as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E. Over and out.